say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in the farmer's kitchen. In town farmer's country kitchen. cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Housewarmings, the outdoor living and fireplace experts. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We have a wonderful show for you today. It is not exactly um, the perfect weather yet. We're hoping to get there. But this spring we have many surprises, many things upcoming that you're going to absolutely love. Wait till you see one of our new cooking spots. You're going to absolutely love it. But tonight this show is all about the venison. We're going to call this venison, venison, venison. Now, if you're watching this show and didn't know this, I also uh, am the host of a hunting show where I take deer. Now, a lot of people have, have asked me a question on this particular show. They watch in other states and they want to know, and I don't think I've addressed this yet, what, why I wear a glove on this hand. Well, I lost the use of my right arm in a motorcycle accident when I was in the Marine Corps years and years and years ago. Now, on this other show called Kentucky Field, the oldest outdoor show in the nation, I shoot the bow with my teeth and we do all kinds of fun stuff in the outdoors. And when you see me put venison in our pot tonight, in our mini recipes that we have, some of our favorite go-to venison recipe, you can go over to Kentucky Field and watch us take those deer. Tonight, I'm gonna to make one of Nikki's favorite things. Nikki's gonna make one of my favorite things in a little while, but I'm gonna surprise her. She's out shopping right now. I'm gonna surprise her with one of her favorite things. I know she's gonna be home very shortly. This is so easy. I've taken some loin and I've got my salt rocks right here. I've got some avocado oil on it. Remember when you have a new salt rock you must have plenty of oil on it. As it cooks over time that will season and the, the longer you use it the better it gets but always remember to put your oil on there. Now the temperature needs to be and it is at this point or well about where it needs to be. I've got about 420 degrees. You need to be from four to five hundred degrees and we're going to take our loin and put right there. You know the great thing about this? You're not messing any dishes up. It's automatically seasoned. It's good for you. This is non-processed, cut out of the side of a mountain. No artificial ingredients in this at all. Now as that is searing, and mm, I can't tell you how good this is. We're just going to let that cook on the outside and this is a very simple red wine reduced currant jelly sauce that is absolutely delicious. And these are out of ingredients you probably have in your own kitchen. It's so simple to make, but it so complements, so complements the flavor of this deer, you can't believe it. Now, an old buddy, Raoul Dupree, who's in our cookbook, here's a picture of him on the French Polar Expedition years ago, a French chef, showed me this little, a version of this wine sauce, a reduced red wine sauce, and I have never forgotten it. All right, now I'm gonna to try to make this stuff all come together. Now, this, the great thing about this salt rock, which I really don't understand, 
and I don't need to know the scientific reason why, but it won't burn meat. You can walk away if you forget and leave this on here. It will not burn. So I'm going to turn that over and just let that go. Meanwhile, I'm, bur I'm getting a little bit of butter going over here. This will give this sauce a nice little buttery flavor. I'll take my shallot. I don't need a whole lot. Probably about a teaspoon. And I'm going to let that cook in that butter until it's translucent. And that won't take too long. A lot of folks have been asking for venison recipes. We have some in our cookbook. But we have a lot more coming. Now, as you can imagine, it is the spring of the year. Most folks have a lot of venison in the freezer that deer hunt. So we're going to have upcoming recipes that we use a lot. And these are a couple of our favorites tonight that we're going to share with you. And oh, I can't wait to have this. Look how that, it's just taking its time. It's not getting in any hurry. All right, as our venison continues to cook over there, our onions are getting real close, getting nice and brown. I really try to do recipes with things that you can have in your own kitchen, but something I would highly recommend that you start keeping around the house. This is good for beef as well. It's red currant jelly. It adds such a wonderful flavor, such a wonderful flavor to beef or any kind of red meat. I use it in lamb. I use it in venison. It's one of my favorites. Now I'm going to come in with some. This is a uh, Kentucky Sweet uh, Wine by Crispin Mill, Riverbend Red. It's absolutely delicious and wonderful for cooking. I'm going to pour that in there. I'm going to let that reduce down a little bit. And I'm going to come back with some just some beef granules, some broth. Now be careful there. You don't want to get too much. You don't want to get it too salty. But you're going to have the sweet versus the salty. And we're going to take two heaping tablespoons of red currant jelly. There's your sweet. And that's going to reduce down until it starts to thicken up. And I'm going to stir this occasionally and watch it and see where it's going. I'm going to taste it and see if it's where we're at. And if it's not quite sweet enough for you, you want it a little, to be a little bit sweeter, take you some, uh, some just white sugar and pour in there. And just let that reduce down and reduce down. On high heat, you want it to really get a good boil going. And this is doing just what it needs to do over here. I've been using this more and more and experimenting more and more. One thing you always have to remember, keep your oil on it. Keep your oil on it. And you need a high smoke tolerance oil, such as avocado oil or grapeseed oil. I'm using avocado today. These are retaining that moisture on the inside. And we like ours rare. I'll come back to my sauce, which has a nice, nice, extremely wonderful good smell to it. And as you go along, you add what you need. You try not to burn your tongue. I'm just about there. Taste-wise, that's almost perfect. That is really, really good. And it so enhances the flavor of this venison. And when Nikki gets here, we'll start dipping this, and she really, really likes it. Now, let me tell you about the salt rocks again. More people have been asking us to use that and some tips and tactics, and we're going to bring some folks in. John Tucker's going to come back and cook some more with us. This is absolutely wonderful. You don't have to flavor your meat. The flavors that come out of this are absolutely wonderful. You're, a, you're not using a dish. Now, if you get too much residue on that, eventually you'll just scrape that off. You never have to wash it. Don't wash it off. Just scrape it off. Put just some more oil in there. The more you use it, the more season it gets. And you can use this again on your stove top. You can use this in your oven, on your big green egg, which we like to use it. And you have the combination of the smoky flavor there as well. And when that starts to thicken up on the end of my spoon, then we're there. All right, now look how that looks. See how you're getting those really big bubbles? And you can see that it's thickening up there on the edge of my spoon. Now. Now we're ready. What are you making? You know what I'm making. Ooh, yummy. You like that, don't I you? I do like that. Now here's the, uh, here's the rewards to doing your own thing, taking your own initiative to go out and get your own meat, and things like that. The reward is wonderful. Let's take Ooh. a slice on here. You made wine sauce? I got your wine sauce that you absolutely love. Can I try it? You can try it. I'm going to cut into this. Look what we got. Oh, wow. Beautiful pieces of loin. Rare, which is the way we like it. But you can see it's done on the outside edges. We don't have to worry about the seasoning. It's already there because of the salt rock. Yum. And let's take it, dip it into our wine sauce. Is that? Mm. That's perfect. Now what I'm gonna do, 
So I'm gonna take that off and let that set. I'm gonna have you slice that up and we're gonna have us a wonderful appetizer. Now, if you don't have deer, I suggest you go ahead and get you some. If you are not able to do that or can't do that, you can do this with beef as well. Please try this. All your friends will be impressed mm. and your friends will say, I don't want to eat deer meat. I bet you, I bet you change their mind. All right, let's have a couple more pieces and then we're gonna dig into some more recipes. Now recently, we canned some deer meat. And a lot of people say, ooh, that sounds complicated, it sounds tough. It's not that tough. A lot of recipes that we use include canned deer meat. Now why is that? I like to put things together, as you do, that can be done quickly. Right. A lot of times, most of us today are very busy. When we have deer in the can, it's already to the point where it's tender. If you want to research this further, please go to our YouTube site and find our canning segment. Here's something that happened to us. We killed pigs this year. We had so many pigs that we had to take some of the deer meat out. We actually took it out of the freezer and canned it. Now it's good for a couple years, probably longer, but do the smell test on that. It's just that simple. And people have canned meat for years. Don't let it intimidate you. Is this wonderful? That's good. Thank you for making this. That's good. You like that, don't I you? I do. I'm cut some more. Here, I got one for you. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got me some butter warmed up. Nikki, if you will, let's go ahead and cut this onion up. This next recipe is so simple, so delicious. Normally it would take you a long time because you would have to get your meat cooked down. Are those a good size or not? Yep, those are perfect. You go ahead. You know what I like about you making this? What's that? Last time you made it, I never got a bite of it. Oh, I'm really? Sure I cleaned the dishes and I smell, it smelled good. So I'd love to taste this. Who ate it, Nikki? You and all the Kentucky Phil guys. Oops, they do tend to. Help me eat my stuff. Yeah, they, you guys ate everything. All right, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get, get our onions nice and browned. And we're gonna use a medium-sized yellow sweet onion. I always like the yellow sweet onions. It seems to me like there's less problems with ingestion and they have that good sweet flavor. That's what we like to use. All right, now this is another recipe that is so tasty. The flavors all combine and melt into this wonderful, wonderful, venison extravaganza. We're gonna take a piece of garlic here. I love my garlic press. I'm gonna make me a little spot here. I'm gonna press me a little bit of garlic in there. It was just one clove, is that okay? Just one clove, yeah, okay. one big clove. Go ahead and scrape that off. You don't need a lot. And I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in with the rest of my onions. Onions are getting close. Your water's boiling, you ready for? Water's boiling. Noodles yet We could probably go ahead and put our noodles in. Let's go ahead and get that going. What do you think? Now, as much as you, uh, out there. Figure out how many people you're cooking for. This is going to be uh, for you and me, and we'll probably have enough left over for tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably do for tonight and for tomorrow. Our onions are getting close. All right, now that we get to this point, Nick, if you want whatever kind of mushrooms you like, let's go ahead and, and cut probably a cup and a half of mushrooms. And what I'm going to do, this is you're cutting those up. I'm going to go ahead and take me a cup, excuse me, of beef broth. And I'm gonna pour in here. Turn the heat up a little bit, let that get to boiling real good. You could use canned mushrooms, but I like to use them fresh when we can. Get those going, let them cook up a little bit. All right, now I'm coming back with some pepper, some black pepper. I like a lot, Nikki likes a lot. Glenn Thompson likes it even more. He grows his own pepper, doesn't he? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Yeah. Now, as that's cooking up, we're gonna add some Worcestershire sauce, Yum. probably about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, whatever you like. I like a lot of it. That's your salt, kind of, salt in it. It up. is. The wonderful part about this process here, as you well know, and just saw earlier, is the fact that we have some canned deer here. The consistency of that deer is so tender and it is ready to just fall apart when we put this in there. We're gonna put that in there with the juice. With the juice. Now always do the smell test. Yep. Good to go. With the juice, watch how this falls apart. You say, okay, that looks odd, but once it breaks up in here, look at that. That looks good, actually. Perfect have you, consistency. Have you get out of the jar before? It's part, yeah, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. It tastes almost like the meat that you get, say, in canned soup in, in, in a Denny Moore beef stew mm. or a Campbell's. It's just absolutely delicious. And it'll cook up even a little more in here. Bring that to a good boil. This is a quick 30-minute meal. Kind it's of. so easy. It's so quick. 
and such a great resource. Now you can do this too, again, with regular deer meat, if it's not canned, but it's just gonna take quite a bit longer. I like quick and easy. Now we're gonna take a quarter of a cup of flour, a half a cup of beef broth, and we're gonna mix that up. Now that's gonna thicken this, this up. And Nikki, if you could find me some parsley, because we're getting ready to present this. Okay. Now, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. We're getting pretty hot here. Your noodles look good. I think they're about done. Now, we're gonna come back with, that's a cup and a half All of it. sour cream. Yummy. Oh, you got a hold of it? Mm-hmm. Then we come back and we mix that in. Is there any wine in this recipe or no? There is. There is. We're, we're gonna come back right now. As a matter of fact, hand me some white wine. I should have done this earlier. I'm glad you mentioned that. This is Crispin Mill. This is a Kentucky White Vida Blanc. We're gonna put a little bit of that in there. And let that cook in, let that simmer down. Now, let's take and drain our noodles. Okay. And the next time you see us, you're gonna see this plated up. All right, here's our venison stroganoff, which I've is never had, I've never had it, You've I'm excited. You've never had it, why did you not have it? Because you ate it all and shared it, and you left me a mess. It smelled good. It looked delicious when I saw it on TV, but I've never had it, I'm looking forward to it. Let's good. see if you're happy when you try this. It's one of my favorite quick recipes. Again, the great thing about this is, is the fact that it's canned, it's quick. That is good. Mm. That's really good. And you can put this together in no time flat. If you know somebody that says they don't like venison, this would be one of those things That's you can sneak in on them. They never know. There's no strong taste. Absolutely delicious. We're going to incorporate some of these same flavors into another dish mm -hmm. that you do, but it's one of my favorite venison dishes in the world, and it's called Mickey's Venison Mushroom Steak. My cookbook. We're going to push this stuff out of the way. We're going to devour that, and you're going to make what is, oh, that's good. mashed potatoes. And you can cook all day. Put it on in the morning. Crock pot. Crock pot. Crock pot is the most wonderful thing. You folks know about it. Everybody's busy nowadays. That's a good thing. If you do have deer meat that you've got to cook for a long time, mm -hmm. put it on low, walk out the door. When you come right. back at the end of the day, boom. This make, is Yeah, make it the night before. Even leave it in the fridge, throw it in the morning, go. It's one of those things right. that you, everybody's going to love. There's, there's absolutely no wild taste. you got to understand. If you, if you process your deer right, get that deer off the bone, into the freezer as quick as you can. Try not to cut through the bone. To me, that's the best way, don't you? We, we can clean a deer in two hours, right. have it in the refrigerator, and done. All right, let's eat the rest of this, okay. and then let's make my favorite recipe that you make and go from there. Mm, nom, nom. All right, recently somebody shot some footage uh, and sent it to our Facebook page on their iPhone. This is absolutely hilarious. Watch their kids' reaction to the opening of the Country Kitchen show. Watch this. All right, now this is a good time to talk about our Facebook page. Go to Tim Palmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, like us. We have a new season coming up. It is gonna be so much fun. We have learned over these last couple years what you wanna see. We're gonna be doing a lot of cooking outside. We have this new beautiful spot that we're gonna set up very shortly. We're so excited about it and a lot of secrets to share. Plus, guess what? What? We got a little trip we're planning to the south, oh, to yeah. the deep south. That will be nice. Do a little fishing, cook up some local recipes down around Mississippi, That'll be fun. New Orleans. Orleans. Ooh, we're gonna take a fun trip down there and have some of the locals cook up some of their favorites. Also visit TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Check out some shows you might not have seen. All our recipes are there. And we have a lot of fun looking back at people's comments and, and different things like that. But you know what? what? This is gonna inspire some comments because this is delicious. This is Nikki's Venison Mushroom Steak. And this is a piece of I actually roast. took a roast. Yeah. You can and use you can any use whatever. right or pieces, but this is half of a roast. Because mm -hmm. I figured just you and I, we've eaten so much, just do a small right. portion of this. You want me to put you some butter in here and get it going? Go ahead and get that going right. if you like. Now this is one of my absolute favorites. And uh, I like to have me some mashed potatoes use along with this. Some carrots too. Oh yeah. You can put the whole thing in. Do oh, this. you want a whole stick of butter? Yeah, I want See, the whole stick. See, I'm liking this already. It's, it's good How can you. you go wrong? And we're going to go ahead with the whole onion. 
because this will cook. You can cook this for six hours. It says in the cookbook, six hours on high or eight hours on low. So this is going to cook a long time. Now, this is a little different from what we did a little while ago. That was a quick recipe. This is one of those great things to use your crock pot for. As you walk out the door, I guarantee your kids will like this. Genuine. This is Nikki's, again, venison mushroom steak. It's page 22 of our cookbook. What do we go from here? All right, and they don't have to be browned all the way. Just Because it's going to cook all day right. long. We're going to go ahead and cut slices. If, before we've had chunks, you can use anything you want. But we're going to go ahead and have, I'm going to make us some thin slices. And the, the thing about deer meat, there, there is no fat in it. It's the healthy meat. Here I'm talking about healthy as we use a stick of butter. But hey, it's a trade, right? right. No That's fat right. on there, a little right. bit of fat in here. That's right. Salt and pepper both sides. And all we're going to do is dip these in flour. We're going to just brown them lightly. Mm -hmm. We're not going to cook them. We just want to kind of seal them. So you're going to be in charge of the meat. Now you're going to put that in here with the onions? Yes, we're going to let them cook. Slide these out of the way. They yeah. can be right on the onions. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They can be on. They're just going to, all we're doing is browning just it. Brown them up a little bit. Because yeah. i got a lot to go in You here. know how many times I've eaten these and never watched you cook this? You smell it going. Then when oh, we start it in the morning. Oh, long you smell it going. All right, you, you have your two pounds of venison. That was probably more like a little over a pound, but this right. is just for us. Two cans of mushroom soup, okay, we have that. which we have on board right here. You need a spoon. You're going to put that in the crock right. pot. Just put it right in the crock pot. All this is going to cook right on top of this. Can we turn these? Yep, they're probably ready to be turned. All right, so you've got your mushroom soup. What mm -hmm. goes in there next? Now we're going to put a cup of wine. And that is Crispin Mills. That's a Kentucky Red, and they call it a, a River right. Red. It's a great to cook. wonderful wine to pair with this. It's got a, it's got a little bit of a sweet taste. Great to cook venison with. And in the cookbook it says a can of mushrooms, uh -huh. but we're going to use fresh. So being I don't have any juice because I like the juice, I'm going to go ahead and use a little beef broth to get that, gotcha. that juice that we would get from the mushrooms. Right. You see how simple this is? We're just going to put it all in here. That's the dish right there. Look at right. that. And those are probably about ready to pour in. All right. You got your mushrooms sauce. in the crock pot? Pour a little of that. Now you know I like more than that, more of that than most folks. Tell me what you think. I say keep going. I say keep going. It doesn't look real appetizing, but there it is. And if you want to pour the steak in here. We're going to plop everything in there. In the onions. Let's try not to splash. Get it all in there. Okay, go ahead. And that's everything. Is that it? That's it. And that's what I smell all day long. And this is going to cook, right, we're going to go six hours. We're probably going to, since we want to eat it a little sooner, let's go six hours on high. And that's it. See how and it looks? you want to, I would prefer that you cook this on low so you don't boil all of your, all of your uh, juices out of there and dry it out. This is it. That's Maybe it. Maybe a little bit of pepper, just because Glenn loves it. There we go. We're going to put the top on and cook it. All right, now let's go watch four movies. Okay. okay. And then when we come Build back, an appetite. we'll be ready. Okay. Let's clean this mess up. And Nikki Nikki Cocoa Puff, you've outdone yourself this once again. Looks good, doesn't it? That is wonderful. Look how tender this is. Watch this. It just, boom, just it breaks off. Apart. I'm telling you. Look, and look at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. Oh, that's so good. And it makes a gravy. See and that? I like the way you make your mashed potatoes, you leave your you leave your hide on them. I'm telling you what, if you don't like this, then I'm going to have to come to your house and we're going to have to have a talk. Mm. That's absolutely delicious right there. Why do you like oh, it? Oh, man. Try this. Please try this. If you don't have venison, do a little experimentation with the beef and then come back, get you some venison next year and hook yourself up, hook your friends up. Know what good meat is. And don't forget, again, to check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Check out our YouTube site. Thank you so much for watching in Texas, California, all the border states of Kentucky, especially you Kentuckians, for watching our show and making it the wonderful little show that it is. We are so proud to have you as friends and so proud to share our kitchen with you. This is our beginning of the season today. This is our new show. We have so many things coming up. So many exciting things. Mm -hmm. We got some trips we're gonna take. We have some restaurants we're gonna visit. We're gonna be cooking outside. I got some Dutch oven experts coming in to help us out with our cowboy cooking. We're gonna have some surprise guests. All kinds of fun stuff coming up. I'm telling you what, this is absolutely delicious. And again, this is my favorite venison dish that you do. Absolutely yummy. All right, I'm gonna have to give you a little cheers here. Okay. To a wonderful next season, most people do 13 to 15 shows. We do more like 40. Right. That means a lot of new shows coming your way. Cheers, my dear. Cheers. It's all about good times. Good friends. Good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Palmer's Country Kitchen.
special thanks to Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Market and Cafe, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, and Weisenberger Mill. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life.